Hi, I'm Nick Driftwood, filmmaker and Panasonic Lumix ambassador. Hi, I'm John McGregor. I'm a product trainer with Sennheiser. So with the, the Lumix video enabled cameras, you'll notice that we have a, a number of inputs, the microphone input and a headphone socket for monitoring. Um, we have a hot shoe which can uh, employ power to an XLR1 and um, we have inbuilt microphones for when we're setting up and using the camera without any microphones in. and it's not too bad actually um, but it's obviously quite a wide spectrum of sound being picked up and the frequencies can be all over the place. Yeah, they? they can be a bit. I mean, the inbuilt microphones on cameras are, are absolutely essential because they can obviously be used as backup microphones should everything go horribly wrong. But you know, they are they are what they are. Um, they, they do have a very unfocused uh, directionality to them. Um, and obviously they will pick up a lot of ambient noise. So you, you do want to think about using external microphones with your cameras at some point. And then we move on to, you know, plugging in something like this is the Panasonic MS2 microphone, DMW MS2. It's a stereo directional shotgun microphone. Uh, and this will plug straight into the mic input on the side of you know, any uh, Lumix camera with video enabled. And um, obviously that gives you a lot more control of uh, the manual settings. You can like lower the decibel range and you can really, really hear it when you plug your headphone monitoring in. Uh, the difference is much greater than you when using the, uh, the mic, uh, the inbuilt mics on the camera. So, you know, more direction, John. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, now you've got a, a proper microphone on top of the camera. Uh, with proper control over it so you can get some some much better levels from it. And also because it's a directional microphone, you can be that little bit further away. Um, and the way it's designed is it removes a lot of the ambient sound from the side, so you are getting that directional image. Much like the lens of the camera, you are focusing more on what's in front of the camera, whereas the built-in microphone is going to be pretty much trying to pick up a much wider field than, than you'd want. Mm. And of course, the nice thing about the Panasonic DMW MS2 is that um, they've actually built in some extra functionality for audio recording inside the camera. When you plug this particular camera in, it recognizes the MS2 and um, you can see that we can you know, change the, the, the direction or the, the spread of the pickup of the microphone from stereo all the way down to you know, really, really sort of directed shotgun control. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, yeah, not a bad uh, setup. But yourselves, uh, Sennheiser, have you got an, an option for yeah, this? Yeah, we do. We have our MKE 400 and our MKE 440. The 400 is a, is a small shotgun microphone that goes on top, and the 440 is a stereo shotgun microphone that goes on top. Um, and very, very, very slim into this. Once again, 3.5 mil connector, plug them in, uh, and they are battery powered, which makes life nice and simple. Mm, absolutely. So let's go up a level now and look at uh, putting on a, a device such as this. This is the Panasonic XLR1. This is uh, an audio adapter which uh, gives you much more manual control. And the great thing about the XLR1, it draws its power from the camera. So you don't need to put separate batteries in. Lock it on, turn it on, and you can see that uh, the green light that we have power coming from the camera here we have uh, full control, manual gain pot control of uh, two, mono, uh, two mono mics or two uh, a stereo mic setup. We have phantom power, line and mic settings, depending on what type of microphone is plugged in. So phantom power, John, just quickly um, yeah. give us a, a brief overview for those who don't know what phantom power is. Yeah. So phantom power is for microphones such as this. This is a condenser microphone. Condenser microphones are different from dynamics. We need to supply power to the, the microphone capsule itself because the microphone capsule is based around the idea of a capacitor. So we use 48 volts and that just gives us the power we need to make sure the microphone does its job. Excellent. Now of course we've also got you know like a little bit of filtering, a low pass filter on here. We've also got um, the uh, uh, what we call the ALC uh, external switch. So if you don't want to set a level and you want it all automated, you can still use the automated level control. Um, but yeah, nice pop control, manual recording and uh, manual setting rather of the input, um, and very very nice too to, to use uh, you know in uh, professional sort of level yeah, situations. Absolutely. Okay, so what's the advantages of using you know, a microphone XLR input over something which is you know, more plumbed in like this straight into the line 
input. Well, it gives you the opportunity to start using, you know, higher grade microphones, more expensive microphones. And obviously, the, the, higher, the, the higher quality of the microphone gives you a proportionate higher quality of the audio as well. Um, so yeah, that's your main advantage. Excellent. Okay, great. And um, the next, probably the final scenario for in terms of video recording, um, we do have uh, the mic input is actually switchable in software over to line level. Uh, and that means, well, I'll, John, you explain line level recording. What is that all about? Yep. So line level is the signal that you'd get out of a mixing console or you'd get out of an external recorder such as the Tascam. And, you know, the, the advantage of having that is that you could plug in the signal from your mixing console directly into the camera and record it. Uh, or you could also take the signal out of your, your external recorder and plug that in. It just gives you an extra ability to record that audio again. One thing to be aware of if you're doing that, you know, especially if you're using a mixing console or a multi-channel recorder is that obviously on the mixing console or on the Tascam, as an example, you're going to have individual control over the, the, the levels. As soon as you bring it into line level on the camera, you're only going to get a stereo signal. So you're going to have to be pretty sure of your signals. But, you know, as a backup, again, as another backup recording of your audio, it's not a bad thing. If you've set up things properly in the in the external recorder or especially on the mixing console, you should already have a pretty decent stereo signal that should everything else go horribly wrong, yeah. you've still got a good... And of course, far better than the internal video recording yeah, micro audio uh, channel. Great. Is there any benefit to the inbuilt mics then? Yeah, absolutely. When you're doing things like scratch audio, um, so just very quick setup, just turn the camera on, boom, off you go. Uh, you don't have to worry about setting up all the other external microphones. So yeah, they are really useful to have. Uh, in fact, I have a good story actually of, of, of uh, the internal microphone. I, had, I used to be a teacher and uh, a whole bunch of my students went off and did a film project and they shot hours and hours and hours of uh, footage and didn't turn the microphones on. So they actually thankfully had the internal microphone, so it did save their, save their skin. And that was the quick guide to the microphone and accessories available for the Lumix S1H and other Panasonic Lumix video-enabled cameras. Panasonic.